واش كاين يا واش كاين يا The man having the living daylights beaten out of him is a Berber, a native of Morocco. His assailant is an Arab. His ancestors conquered the Berbers 1300 years ago. They're acting out an ancient conflict. But there are those who'll tell you the argument between Berber and Arab has never changed. In Morocco, even the very name Berber is a controversial one. For militants like Miriam, the word Berber is a term that sums up the contemptuous treatment of her people by conquerors as far back as the Romans. Etymologiquement parlant, veut dire euh, de la forêt, veut dire sauvage. Hein. C'est un mot qui vient du, du grec, que les Romains aussi ont utilisé, euh, que les Français utilisent sous forme de berbère et que les Arabes utilisent sous forme de barbare. Hein. Et c'est un mot qui n'existe pas dans notre langue. Hein. Nous, nous nous appelons Amazir et non pas euh, berbère. So they're not Berbers. They're Amazir, and they make up at least 65% of the population. Yet the Amazir learn Arabic at schools in which their language and their history is never mentioned. And their king has Arab roots stretching back to the Prophet Muhammad. They have a word for what's happening to them. They are being Arabized. Oui, c'est pour ça que nous militons aujourd'hui, hein, pour, pour que notre langue et notre culture ne disparaissent pas de, de, sur Terre. Miriam wants to take us to Amazia Heartland, to Imachil, and the festival known as the Moussem des Fiancés, roughly translated, the marriage market. C'est très joli euh, dans cette région, hein? Mais le Maroc en général, c'est très joli, hein, oui. mais il n'y a pas qu'ici, hein. oui. partout. Partout, oui. Hein? Mais, euh... Le pays des Amazirs, c'est le plus beau qui puisse exister sur ah, Terre. Ah oui, tu penses ah, bon, alors. <rire> But isolation has its price. Many Amazirs live without running water, or doctors, or hospitals, or even reliable roads. Ah, ils ont un problème à deux. Ah oui, il y a là. La route est coupée. We find the direct road through a mountain pass to Imichil has been washed out. Our driver, Hadou, reckons on at least a six-hour detour round the mountains. The extra hours mean we spend a night by the road. It's a chance for Miriam to explain that while the Imichil marriage market has a long history, she believes its nature is changing as the government turns it into a tourist event. Bon, maintenant, qu'est-ce qu'on attend demain euh, J'en sais trop rien parce que depuis que c'est organisé par les par les autorités, euh, on se méfie un peu. On se demande si c'est toujours euh, authentique. The next morning, it's as if we've travelled back through centuries. A landscape so rugged, so isolated and inhospitable, it's a wonder to me that people live here at all. Yet out of this apparent wasteland come the Amazir people. It's as if the whole countryside is on the move. Whatever transport the Amazir can find, they use to make their way to the town of Imachil. It's a time when the normally shy and cloistered young Amazir women find a measure of freedom unique in this part of the world. Under their family's watchful eyes, they'll have a chance to roam and to meet and talk to potential husbands. Yeah. 
Imichel, the last great market before the onslaught of winter. Three days for scattered Amazir tribes to meet before the snows set in. Over the centuries, some things have changed a little. The livestock market continues its age-old discussions, haggling over camels and mules. But there are some new faces now. It's one of the few times of the year when Amazir villagers run across government officials. And when the tribesmen tell us about their problems, such as drought and falling prices for camels, we're interrupted. <laughs> I'd noticed him following us. Maybe it was the dark glasses that gave him away. A government official, keeping an eye on them and on us. This is the only time of year when government officials make their presence felt here. The governor's arrival is intended as a symbol of a powerful but remote Arab-dominated government in Rabat. What was once simply an Amazir event has been turned into something more, a celebration of national authority. And in the process, ordinary Amazir find themselves increasingly excluded from their own festivities. Not only excluded, but becoming objects of curiosity, as the government with an eye to the tourist dollar gives free reign to a growing number of tourists and journalists. We kind of invade the place, and the local people who just, you know, perhaps may well want to just get on with their own musab and not have us around, um, they're kind of a bit overwhelmed. The increasing commercialization of the festival has been watched by British photographer Alan Keohane in the dozen years he's been coming here. The government wants to have people nicely dressed in traditional costumes um, to pose for the photographers, and the photographers are desperate to get those kind of photographs. Um, but at the same time, it's incredibly shameful for nice girls to pose for photographers. To them, almost a form of pornography. So you, you have this con contradiction, conflict of interests. So why are they here then? They're here because um, they, uh, they've been asked to come here. And it's, um, in a, to an extent, it's an honor, but also it's, um, they haven't got a great deal of choice. Attempts to broaden the Musem's appeal can border on the bazaar. Miriam objects to outsiders like Tarzan here, turning the Musem into a carnival sideshow. What angers Miriam is that while her people are being written out of the nation's history books, their traditions are being stage managed for tourist dollars. <laughs> Having put in an appearance for a couple of hours, the governor leaves, unable to spare the time to talk about sensitive Amazir issues. But Miriam has found like-minded militants who are driven to discuss exactly those issues. Même ce petit paragraphe, ils l'ont fait sauter. Un petit paragraphe d'Imazirne. Excuse-moi. 
Zaid has recognized Miriam as a kindred spirit from the T-shirt she's wearing. It's Amazia lettering, a symbol of militancy, and regarded as subversive by the government. Miriam and her friends are militants, not revolutionaries. But there's no way to pursue their cause through the ballot box in Morocco. No political means to express their passions. While insiders argue the politics and outsiders soak up the atmosphere, there is still traditional business afoot, the matter of love and marriage. Young women have a say in who they marry and can demand divorce and later remarry, all without social stigma. It's the romance, of course, that attracts the tourists. But Miriam rejects the portrayal of the Musem as some sort of North African love fest. Bon, là, je crois qu'ils profitent de l'occasion seulement pour, pour avoir leur papier. Hein. Ouais. Mais je pense pas qu'il doit y avoir tout ce scénario euh, de je viens au marché pour acheter une femme comme je viens pour acheter une vache. Non, ça c'est. <coughs> Amazia women are by upbringing timid in public. So one can only speculate on their thoughts on this, their official government approved wedding day. What should be a dignified, joyous event becomes a publicity zoo. I think they're kind of um, dying of shame or embarrassment. I think it must be horrible. It's nice to be a spectator, but at the same time, you've got to bear in mind that. Um, you know, the real people who want to come and see it are, you know, their family and friends. They're all stuck behind the barrier. And because we've got press cards and, you know, we're tourists and the Ministry of Tourism wants us to come here, you know, we get access to it. The press, unfortunately, with encouragement from the tourist authorities, sells stories built on extraordinary myths about Imashil. I've read you can buy a bride for a mere three bags of sugar. Such distortions outrage Miriam and her friends. C'est une société qui a tendance à être matriarcale, comme des Touaregs. C'est la femme qui commande à la maison. Oui. C'est la femme qui fait tout. Oui. C'est c'est la société berbère typique. Oui. Comment est-ce possible que des Berbères vendent des femmes? Est-ce que vous vous avez vu des femmes se vendre ici? Zaid wants to strip away the myths and takes us to a nearby village to meet one of today's bridegrooms and to better understand Amazia problems. Il y a une école ici, seulement voilà. Il y a peu de gens qui vont à l'école oui. pour une simple raison. Oui. Euh, L'enseignant, l'instituteur, il vient des régions arabophones. Oui. Il vient ici, il ne peut pas vivre, il ne communique pas avec les gens. Dans le système des choses actuelles, c'est qu'il faut un traducteur entre l'enseignant et l'enseigné. Tu vas à l'école Tu vas à l'école it seems only one in five children here go to school at all. Those who do learn in Arabic and because of Morocco's colonial history in French. What they learn about their own identity, they do so in their own home. When we meet the bridegroom from the Musem, he takes us to his village house. Hussein's bride is too bashful to meet strangers. His mother, by contrast, is simply annoyed, put out more by us filming the state of her courtyard and her animals than by our unexpected arrival. <laughs> like all Amazir, Hussein's real wedding will actually take place in the village. 
but he had to go to the marriage festival because it's the only time of year to get the obligatory government marriage certificate. <laughs> Far from buying his bride, Hussein says he'll give her 200 hard-earned dollars for her wedding gift. But he's annoyed at forking out another $30 for a certificate that's meaningless in Amazia society, and he can't read it anyway. At night time, with government officials gone, the local tribes regain possession of their festival. Almost. The tourists remain, of course, to enjoy the ambiance. And the trinket sellers, well, they're city folk, here to turn a buck. And when we stop into a tent to while away the evening, we find out it's not Amazia music at all. They're an Arab group, invited by the government to perform at this Amazia festival. Later, I ask Miriam if she's been saddened by what she saw at Imeshil. Ben oui, parce que euh, nous étions sûrement euh, 99% ou quelque chose de ce genre. Nous sommes aujourd'hui 70. Demain, ça sera 60, 50, 40, 30, et puis on sera comme les Indiens d'Amérique. In the morning, the tourists leave with their trinkets and their memories. The Amazir go home too home to the mountains, to wait for the long, cold winter ahead.